So, so right now we're in we're an early access launch, and there's there's really one world, and it's called Time's End. The general lore of Big Time is that it's set in the distant future. Time is collapsing, and there's an evil corporation called Paradox Corp that is affecting time. Their nickname is called Big Time, which is where the name of the game comes from. Um, and so that's where the player enters to, on behalf of the good guys, and you know, they pair up with Albert Einstein, and they're they're beating all the enemies in a variety of levels. Throughout, like, so kind of imagine you're in an open zone or an open world and there's, like, forests and ice cages, uh, ice-type areas. But then imagine, like, a Rick Rick and Morty portal appears out of nowhere, and that allows you to drop into an adventure zone. Similar to, like, a dungeon if you play Diablo, each one takes about 15 minutes to play through and it culminates in a boss. And as you beat those enemies throughout, then you can pick up the loot that they drop. And the harder the boss is, the, the better the loot is and the rarer the NFTs. So we got one world right now for early access, but by the time that global launch happens, I think we're going to have uh, multiple worlds available to play. And, and when, when, have- when does that global launch take place? How far out are we seeing that? You no, know, I think we're we're at least ten weeks away. So I think early access launch for us, I think we initially said was ten weeks. I think it's going to take a little bit longer there because it's not just from the gameplay standpoint, but everything else needs to be finalized especially with regards to the marketplace and stuff. So I would say at least 10 weeks. And so how many users do you have? Can you, can you say on the back end how many, how many users you have weekly or monthly and, and, and whatnot so far up to this date? Right now we're in our gold early access pass period. We sold about 1,000 passes. About 600 are consistently playing the game each day right now. And, uh, you know, this early access period for gold pass holders is going to last about another two and a half weeks. So, I mean, like a lot of people are involved right now. I think we've got one million pre-registered users right now. It's, it's, I mean, there's there's some huge hype wow. coming in the game. For this whole game to work, we really need tens of millions of players because it's a free-to-play game and it's not a pay-to-win game. So how do you make those NFTs and those cosmetic items valuable to people you need to build a culture behind it to do that you need a lot of players you need to make it important and that all falls apart if you don't have a good game so if you want to bring in those web 2 players you go for email type access um, as opposed to hey you need to have a meta mask Um, you want them to be able to execute those purchases easily this way you as the space holder have an audience to sell to and it's a large one so that's why we really opted for the the email option for signing in as opposed to going with the MetaMask. You know, it, and it's not super fashionable inside the Web3 community, but the flip side is that we bring in a much stronger Web2 gaming community. You know, Web2 by itself was $195 billion last year. So there's a lot of money out there. And, you know, one of the biggest boons to, to, to gaming was free-to-play. And that's why we went for the email option as opposed to MetaMask. So I come from like uh, like you said earlier the Diablo space Destiny Destiny two kind of situation. I'm like top five percent in Destiny as time played. So for someone I'd say like me that's gonna probably get into it and grind two five six days a week with the NFTs that are dropping, are they gonna be multiple of the same types with different rarity traits, or is it gonna be um, just a numerous amount of individualistic like one for one NFTs? Yes, so there are multiple types of rarities for NFTs inside the game, and I think we've been pretty forthcoming in the in the gold uh, the gold access period about how rare those are. Basically, saying, "Hey, how many are going to drop during gold access versus you know global release?" So, what the way the way a lot of people have been playing the game so far is they find NFTs inside the game and then they're putting them onto the marketplace right now. Um, and then you know you can see the prices on nft.bigtime.gg, but that's that's generally the way it's been working during EAL. It's going to be a little bit different during the global launch period because that's when we're like our guild asset permissioning type features to start to come into full effect. So so users aren't even seeing the full effects of space right now. But that core mechanic of being able to find NFTs and putting them on in the marketplace is still going to be available to you. Here's the math that's probably what I think you're asking about. There's 600,000 space. We're aiming for hundreds of thousands or millions of users a month. About 25% of that space has already been purchased. And 
we've got to get the rest of that space somehow into the game over the course of several years. That's not a lot of space. It's really not. And the other thing I wanted to mention, um, like uh, on Binance, like there is a difficulty searching for big time NFTs um, postcards because of their, you know, the way the name is spelled. Um, you should talk to them to do something about it because it's very difficult to find anything. Binance has been an interesting partner. We did a sale on there and it crashed. And there's and there's been some kind of fraudulent projects that have popped up. But I can tell you though is there are no fraudulent NFTs that I've seen on the big time marketplace. So that's one of the things because it is our marketplace, we can control it pretty closely. And that way, if you want to feel comfortable getting an NFT on there, you can feel very confident. Uh, you know, what is your plan to get a million users per month? Uh, you know, and, and how far out are those projections there? And how do you intend to do it? Um, we really think that the, the game will market itself just being revolutionary in the space and being a genuine game uh, and being driven by the community. Uh, that will lead to the, the best marketing. The corollary to that, too, is we've got a really big team. Like, I think we're at about 80 full time people in big time. And then. We engage a ton with our community across, obviously not just on Twitter, but on Discord through Medium as well. So we engage a ton, which I think is like pretty different. We look for the feedback and we incorporate the, that feedback basically as fast as we can, especially with regards to fixing some of the bugs we've seen. So how far out are your uh, thoughts and plans? You know, where do you see this in two years or five years? Uh, where do you uh, see the next move? The team, like first and foremost, we, we are like laser focused on global launch. Basically, if global launch doesn't go well, then nobody cares about what we do afterwards. So it's got to be good. And it's not just the game that's got to be ironed out, but it's the marketplace, the way we roll. We roll out those permissioning features, the way we bring in other people. So like the team is like very, very focused on that. And from there, you know, aspirationally, we have we've discussed a variety of things we could do next. Um, and a lot of where we go next is going to be driven by our community. Oculus is, is, it's out there and it's huge and you can't ignore it. And, you know, we could do that next. We could go to consoles. There could be a mobile version. I will tell you that, you know, personally, I am working on esports engagement. And I think that is, I think that's going to happen sooner rather than later about how to get esports involved and then some sort of tournaments where we have, you know, teams or guilds kind of going against each other and then streaming it across a variety of platforms. We're a PVE game, so it's a little bit different um, in terms of how we how we run that. But through AMAs and talking to other people on on in the Web three space, there's some very cool options for how we could run an esports tournament on um, big time. And it's something that's that's kind of near and dear to me, and I, I'm definitely driving driving forward on this one. You know, if the global launch doesn't go as planned. Right. Well, what is what is the plan B to, to regroup and make sure that this gets where it needs to be? It's it's hard to answer that concretely without knowing, I guess, the why. So if if people are like, oh, this game stinks or it's crashing a lot, that's that's one set of problems that we can fix where it's like, OK, we need to right. you know servers gameplay something like that if it's a marketplace problem that's a, that's another set of issues if it's an economy problem that's that's something different but you know this isn't like a a a, a hidden project we're a big project and we're pretty well covered like you can see all the way back to like our series a back in may of 2021 that our partners and in, in the initial investors are, are like big uh, what else about the game have we missed or we haven't touched on so actually on that, I want to I wanna address some, some FUD I've been seeing on our Discord right now. Um, and I know some people from our Discord have, uh, have chimed in for this AMA, but I, I really, it's very important to me that I talk about our early access period. Um, so the gold pass period is four weeks. And so if you bought a pass, you, know, you get un -ex exclusive access into the game for four weeks. We did not change that to three weeks. What we did set up is allows people to sign up and and basically burn their silver pass a week early so that way once the day hits may 17th they can start playing immediately some people saw that and they were like oh no i lost an entire week off of my gold access pass and there has been some serious fud going on inside of our discord but that is not that's fud that's not true and so what would be the main benefits of owning say you go in and buy 100 spaces the main benefit that comes from having space 
is that you can enable more NFT features. And that generally falls into two categories. One, you can collect the big time token only if you have space. And two, you can upgrade the NFTs that you find inside the game. So there's there's a little bit more to the mechanics of how it's evolved. So like if you want to start collecting the in-game token, you need to enable this thing called an hourglass, which is inside of your space. And it basically hits a countdown timer for you to start collecting the token as, as droppable loot inside the game. Then for the upgrading the NFTs, if you find, for example, a level one sword and you want to level it up to, to individualize it and enable some other features, then you need space where you can craft it and upgrade it some more. About 24% of all the space has been sold so far, and we're going to drop the majority of it into the game, not just during EAL, but during Global Launch 2. And that needs to take place over the course of several years. There will be a, a guild mechanics inside of the game as well. And there, that way, you know, total, ca totally casual players are able to bring things back to like the guild who can then upgrade those items and put them onto marketplaces and such. It goes to, so we want, we want like players who just want to have an enjoyable game and play it for, you know, a couple hours a week to, to get involved with the game too. And those people may not necessarily want to go out there and buy space for hundreds or thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what they, they can find a home inside of big time and, and, uh, and have them have access to that marketplace without having to kind of worry about owning space or going through the whole process of upgrading things so basically like imagine in the future the other community that has a metaverse um invites you to kind of participate in something or maybe do something maybe kind of tournament um how is technologically will be possible to do well imagine esports but like you want to participate with the other community besides your community so what we already have is a staging server where we can basically put two teams and give them X amount of time. And they have, at the end of that amount of time, we can see who has cumulatively leveled up the most or gained the most XP. Um, and we can use that as like a way of determining uh, who kind of wins the overall tournament. So that's, that's on like a technical level of what we could do very quickly on the esports realm. You know, what you're, we were talking about longer term in terms of like interoperability. I think it's that's that's kind of like the pipe dream, right? Of like, how do we get this to Ready Player One? I once heard uh, somebody describe the metaverse as the internet built by gamers, and I've I've kind of loved that description because it's it really shows that like gamers have like a competitive and creative aspect to the way they view the metaverse, and how do we do that? But interoperability is, is fundamental to that. On a technical level, it's pretty difficult for, for the software engineers who are out there. Some, some may argue that the juice isn't worth the squeeze in terms of what you'd have to do to get those things, uh, those multiple systems and games working. You just mentioned that you actually have a server. Sorry to interrupt you. But you did mention you have a server, which I didn't know, like spe specifically for this. You can do like a Miro avatars from some community that may be decentralized but they can get like a mirror avatars in your centralized server and kind of game there with their avatars and when they earn something they can claim it in form of nft that actually lives in the blockchain i love that idea having having it play for keeps like in and and the stuff that you find inside the game is, is being really a prize in and of itself i think is pretty pretty appealing and, and one of the one of the benefits of having the blockchain and corporate in the way that we do inside of big time. And when it says uh, extra large, uh, you know, small, medium, large, wh what are we talking about here uh, in the game? You know, how big is that? So those are references to the number of sockets. So sockets is the, the closest parlance I could use is it's like the square footage of it and certain NFTs that you can use inside your space take a certain number of sockets. So a timekeeper takes two sockets, a forge takes three. And so when you have more sockets available through larger spaces, you can add more of those things inside of each space. Um, that's a big part of it. Now, there may be some other components to the leveling up of, of those NFTs that I can't disclose all the details on right now, but broadly speaking, you can increase the rarity of your NFTs by having rarer space.
And a quick question, just to clarify in case I, I missed something. Now, if people want to do person, you know, player to player trades, can people send things just from wallet to wallet or they have to do everything through the marketplace? You know, we have de- we have discussed that like in game drops, like you know, it's just a corner. It's like a cornerstone of um, of like MMORPGs of being able to hand one item to another. You can't do it in EAL, but it's something we're looking about engineering into the uh, the global launch portion. Um, I was asking. I was going to ask if you guys can do some like you know, leak some alpha regarding, like, what other stuff these spaces will be able to do besides Forges and uh, the Timekeeper, you know? You know, I can tease you on on what space kind of, like, is going to look and feel like. So if, you, if you've if you played The Sims and you built a house or something like that, um, it's going to be an individualized and like customizable areas similar to that where you're going to be able to, you know, we, we've discussed and, and shared things like, Hey, you're going to be able to change the paintings or like the layout of the room. It's your own area. And we have talked about ways to, uh, to pull in um, other users so that you can make it like a hangout area. Is there going to be like loot drops for like what you can customize in the space too? Like, I don't know, like a table loot drop or something like that. That's definitely a feature we've discussed, um, and there's that's similar to like what the postcards concept was. If you if you partook in the uh, the mystery boxes sale that we did in December, there's going to be a variety of ways you're going to be able to individualize your your kind of personal space areas for sure. So, are you saying I can use all of my art that I collected from very beginning, from the very first drop, in the space if I get the space? That's nice. Yeah, yeah, basically, there's going to be multiple components to the way that space can incorporate the NFTs that you find inside the game. But we have like you know talked and teased about like, hey, this is almost like a wardrobe of all the of all the cool things that you've collected and being able to display it prominently. But the overall goal is to like make space like a very individualized and like customizable area. So like. Uh... Will all this be customizable oh. with the the big time token? Is this what the in game currency is that you will need to spend to upgrade and to forge and to customize your space and and everything like that? Ooh, I can't release all those features yet. Um, you know what we have talked about with the big time token is that you're going to be able to use it for the big time marketplace, and that's the main feature for it. You know, how the big time marketplace, you know, we are selling NFTs in there and you can move those NFTs inside of your space um, or some of those NFTs inside of your space. So there is a component to that. Now, we haven't released all the details yet on on what that would involve, but a, a, a way of answering your question is yes, there is a way for that token to enable NFTs that go inside of your space. And, and what will be the total supply of the token, or if, if there already is uh, the total supply? So there, we, we, there uh, I think it's 6 billion ballpark. It's, it's somewhere in that, in that ballpark number. Um, we do our token very differently. So the, only, the token only comes from in-game play. You can't get it any other way. So there's no IDO, there's no IDC, not even the CEO himself is going to get the token before the the before the start of the game. He's going to have to 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 grind just like everybody else to get that token. And so, how will the value be set? Oh, basically, like how much does it cost to buy it? To buy a token? Well, yeah. How much will each token be if if there's no you know, if, if you guys, you know, if your guys are holding them and, and you can only get them in the game, how is the value set for the token, if not by the markets themselves? It's going to come from the markets themselves. Oh, oh, but I thought you said you cannot buy it or get it anywhere else, only in the game. Yeah, you got to, you got to play, I'm sorry, you have to play the game to find it because it's, it's, it, it's loot, it's dropped. So when you have your space and, and this thing called an hourglass enabled, then when you you know, knock down some enemy, you can collect that token. And that token, that $6 billion, $6 billion quantity ballpark, is going to be injected into the game kind of over multiple years. Now, that token is on-chain, so you can withdraw it out to a wallet 
or some sort of coin decks if you want to, or you can use it kind of inside of the game. It's for for Axie fans, it's closer to Smooth Love Potion than it is than it is anything else. That's probably the closest parallel we have. Uh, let's say a space has eight slots. Can I put two forges in one space, or is it like going to be a limit, like one forge per space, one timekeeper per space? How's the slots work on that regard? We definitely haven't put out any of those limits yet. And a lot of your questions are going to be answered here probably in the next few weeks, certainly before the end of EAL. And people ask, like, well, why haven't you disclosed everything about how all of these features are going to be able to be used inside of the game? The long story short is we're going through the final testing on it. Um, Why? Because when we launch the economy, it's off and you kind of can't fix it. So if you need to make any adjustments, you're, you're kind of SOL. So we brought in a lot of people like mathematicians and economists to, to stress test and go through it to refine those features. That economy is so hand in hand with our space features that like we have broadly articulated what we're going to do with space. We're going to remain true to that, but exactly how all those NFTs work inside of the game is still to come.